All right, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this snow particle system for your 3D games in Unity. All right, so I'm going to delete that and we can get started. So to begin, you're going to need to add a particle system. You'll right click in your hierarchy, go into effects and then particle system. Make sure that the location is good um, for you to see it and make sure that the rotation is all zeroed out. So I'm going to put it up a bit right there. Perfect. Um, okay, I'm going to rename that to Snow Flakes and get started. So you're going to want to change the start speed to zero. Oh, not 90. Um, you're going to change the start size to a random between two constants because we don't want it to be um, every snowflake like exactly the same. And we're also going to make it a bit smaller. So it's going to be between 0.1 and 0.25. Um, if we zoom in here, this is what our particle system looks like right now. Um, we're also going to make a little start rotation. Um, we're going to have it also random between two constants and we'll make it between negative 15 and 15. <clears throat> so they each get a bit of a random uh, kind of rotation. Um, the start color is good. Everything else is good. Over here um, in the simulation space, we're going to want to change it to world because if we have it as local, um, the issue we're going to have is as the actual particles are spawned and your character moves, we're going to have the particle system parented on the, 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 the character so that it doesn't cover a massive uh, distance and spawn way too many particles for the computer to handle. Um, but if we have it in a local simulation space, as the character moves, all the snow is going to move with them, right? So what we want is world space. And as you move, new snowflakes are just going to be spawned as you go. <clears throat> uh, we're also going to change the max particles. Actually, I won't do that yet, just so my computer runs smoother. Then on emission, we're going to increase this a lot, probably to around 350. And there you can see it's already almost looking a little bit like snowflakes. Uh, in the shape, we're going to want a box. Where is that? A box. And we're going to make the scale uh, 20 by 20 on the X and Z axis. This really depends on um, just like a variety of things, how fast you're going to have the snow coming down and all that sort of things. The size is something that you're going to kind of have to play with uh, depending on your game and the size of your character and so on. Now, velocity over lifetime. This is where our snowflakes are actually going to get their speed. So we're going to change it to a random between two constants. And then on the Y axis, we're going to have it between negative two and negative four. And there you can already see the snowflake starting to fall. Uh, we're going to change these to um, like the X axis and the Z axis to between negative one and one. And there you can see that it gives kind of like a sort of a, just a randomness to it. After that, we're going to uh, go to color over lifetime and activate that. We're going to set a little kind of keyframe. I don't know what it's actually called, but a little keyframe here. And we're going to set the alpha on the very last point to zero. Um, and that's just going to make it so that once we make the snow stick on the ground, um, you'll see it melt away instead of just popping out of existence. Uh, and then finally over here, we're going to add a little bit of noise. Just a tiny bit, because there, when you see one, it's a bit unrealistic. Maybe this would be okay if you had um, a lot of wind, supposedly, in your scene. But for an average scene, I think 0.2 is probably good. And it just gives the effect that maybe there's a little bit of wind, or they're just kind of flapping around as if you like dropped a, a, a paper out of the sky or a feather. And then on collision, this is where we're actually going to make the snowflakes hit the ground and stop. So we're going to change it from planes type to world type. And here you can already see they're going to start bouncing. Yeah, that's good. You're going to get rid of the bounce value so that they stop. And then so that they don't roll around once they hit the ground, you're going to add one to dampen. And then what that's going to do is it's going to stop them and they're going to stick wherever they fall as if they're actual snowflakes. And then you can see they're actually already starting to disappear. They're starting to melt. Um, after that, we're going to go to texture sheet animation because we have this we have this texture here. Um, I just got a picture of snowflakes online and added the, the transparency in the background. Um, I'll have a link in the description for you to actually download this. Um, it's free to use, but not for commercial uses. So as long as you're just practicing or making a little thing at home, you can use this. If you're actually making a game that you're trying to sell or put on Steam, um, you should make your own snowflakes. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new material for the snowflakes. So you're going to add a new material. You're going to go, I'll call this snowflakes underscore mat. And then up here under the shader uh, in the inspector, you're going to change it to a unlit transparent cutout. And then we're going to drag and drop the snowflakes texture into here. Perfect. Uh, so now the reason we have unlit uh, is because if you just have a regular texture, it's going to be affected by lighting and it'll sometimes it'll make the, the snowflakes look gray or, or even black and you, that's not something that you want. Yeah, okay, perfect. So then we're going to go back to our snowflakes and under texture sheet animation, since here you can see that we have four different textures, we're going to want to cut it in four. So it's a grid, that's good, and you're going to change it to two by two. All right, and then in frame over time, instead of having it be linear, this will cause an animation to happen. So it'll go from one snowflake to another to another. We want them to just be random from the start. So we'll have it between one and four. One will be the top left, four will be the bottom right of the image. Uh, and then in the renderer, we're actually gonna drag and drop our material in here. Um, finally, the last thing you wanna do I'm not sure if it's this is this is the default, but you're going to set max particle size to 0.5 so that if you walk into the snowflake, it doesn't take up your entire screen. This will make sure that it only takes up a certain amount of uh, uh, just amount of space on your actual screen. And then finally up here, I can increase the amount of particles now so that it will actually demonstrate properly. It'll take a second. There you go. And then just so you guys can see the actual snowflakes, I'll change the size to one. And you can see that there are different snowflakes and they're all following. And uh, yeah, they're, they're getting their kind of change in direction as they fall. So I'm going to set that back to 0.1. And that's your snow. That's about it. It's really simple. Uh, once you understand the, uh, I guess the, the, particle the particle system kind of set up um, it makes a lot of sense I'm actually going to be doing a, a tutorial on using post-processing along with these snowflakes um, to make a kind of like a, a snowy environment in your game that you can transition in and out of uh, depending on what kind of biome you're in in your game uh, so if that's what in if that interests you, I'll have it uh, somewhere in the top right. Probably I'll have a little card there that you can click on. Um, yeah, and I hope that this was helpful. If there are any questions or I didn't explain something properly, uh, please leave a comment and I'll try and get to it. Um, hopefully I did help out. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe if you want. And yeah, cheers.